We have, sub, we have found evidence for evolutionary change itself, for the gradual, uh, gradualness of evolutionary change, for speciation or splitting, for common ancestry, and for natural selection. That's all the parts of the theory that I've described. Where else can you conclude? It's true. Okay. It's true. <laughs> It's just as true as this, and if you don't believe it, read my book, read Richard's book, and then come back to me, and if you still don't believe it, I don't want to have anything to do with you. <laughs> okay. One more thing before I get to the explanation, and I have a few minutes left here. Um, it's not only true in that the predictions and retrodictions make sense only if evolution were true, but there are many things that could also have falsified the theory of evolution. And I made a list here of a number of things that if we observed any of them in any kind of numbers, it would show that Darwinism is true. I'm not going to go through these. Um, the most famous one is if we saw fossils in the wrong place. Um, a Precambrian human being down 400 million, I'm sorry, 500 million years ago, any fossils out of order would disprove evolution. If we found an adaptation in one species that was not good for that species, but was only good for a second species, well, that isn't predicted by the theory of evolution either. And there's all these other things. The lack of genetic variation would show that there's no ability for natural selection to change plants and animals. We don't find any of these things, OK? We've never observed one of them. So there's been a million chances for natural selection to be wrong. And it has never been wrong. It always comes up right. This is additional evidence that we're dealing with something that is true, OK? So that's, that's the QED. I'm done with the evidence. But I want to talk a little bit about, well, if this is so true, why is there so much resistance to this in the United States? After all, we're 33rd out of 34 technologically advanced countries in accepting evolution. We're scientifically elite. We're supposed to be smart. We're supposed to be savvy. We're supposed to be open-minded. What's the reason? Well, I know you've all thought of this before. Um, the obvious hypothesis is religion. And because, our, well, one reason you can say this is because almost all of the opposition to teaching evolution in our country it comes from people who are religious and who believe that the theory of evolution or the fact of evolution violates their religious faith. Okay. How do we prove that, though? I mean, you can say, well, it's just, you know, there's too many problems with evolution. Well, one thing you can do is plot on a single plot. You take those 34 countries and you plot how religious each country is on the x-axis here, down at the bottom, against the proportion of people that accept the theory of evolution. And you can see then it forms this nice downward curve. This is, if you know statistics, this is highly statistically significant. There's a strong negative relationship amongst those 34 countries between how religious you are and how much, how many of your citizens accept Darwin. There, by the way, is the United States. Um, we're second lowest next to Turkey in terms of accepting evolution. Okay, so we do, so we see here what we predict, that the more religious a country is, the less likely its citizens are to accept evolution. What does that mean? Well, there's two explanations. Remember, everybody started down here in the 1850s. Probably almost everybody believed in God, and nobody believed in evolution because there was an evolution. And then the line somehow became like this. There's kind of two explanations for that. First of all, you could say, well, the countries whose citizens accepted God, evolution more gave up, gave up, gave up God. Okay, because the more and more you accept evolution, the less and less you are to accept God, and that's what accounts for this negative relationship. And that may be true to some extent. After all, a lot of us, like myself and probably Richard as well, um, lost our faith or what little faith we had when we learned about evolution. It just doesn't make any sense. But it seems more likely that what this really reflects is that those countries that are more religious than others for other reasons, having nothing to do with Darwin, are less accepting of the theory of evolution because it violates what they know about or what the creation stories are that their religions tell them. And this is supported by statistics, at least in the United States. A recent poll asked Americans who were religious, if a fact, scientific fact were found that contravenes the dictates of your religion, would you accept the scientific fact or would you reject it and believe what your religion said? And two out of three people said they would reject the scientific fact. So this shows that adhering to religious dogma means that you are less willing to accept Darwinism. And I think that's what these lines reflect. Countries like the United States, which is very religious, or Turkey right here, or Cyprus, 
um, simply, as citizens simply are so imbued in religious dogma that they're unwilling to accept the fact of evolution. Okay, so this is the line. So what you can conclude from this, maybe, is that I'm wasting my time talking to you and writing books about evolution. So what we should really be doing is getting rid of religion. Because it's religion that's the real block here. But wait, wait, I'm not through. I'm not through yet because that, I don't know if it'll work for another reason I'll say it in my last slide. Um, you'd have to get rid of a lot of religion to get acceptance of Darwinism. This line is inelastic with respect to accepting Darwinism. You have to give up 35% of your belief in God to increase your acceptance of evolution by 10%, right? <laughs> so you have to become almost completely atheistic before most of the countries, most of your citizens are going to accept evolution. So I could say, okay, and this is one reason on my website and other places, I decided to move a little better way from defending evolution to going to what I see as blocks to rationality, which is religion. Okay, so get rid of religion, the problem is solved. We all accept Darwinism as a pleiotropic byproduct. Well, that's not necessarily so easy, because why do these countries differ in their religious belief in the first place? And here's a study that just came out recently by Greg Paul. Um, it hasn't, been, I mean, it's gone through peer review. I haven't heard any commentary on it. But what he did is, among 17 countries, he he calculated what he called the successful society index. It is how good is a, this is a society as a harmonious group of people that takes care of itself and is not dysfunctional. So a successful society is one that has, for example, not so many homicides, not so much venereal disease, um, not, so, not so much uh, divorce. Um, not so, health, oh, yeah, health care is another one, right. <laughs> yeah. And health care, of course, um, suicide, and the proportion of its population incarcerated. The, the less you have of that, the more successful you are in a society. This, by the way, was not calculated to make the United States look bad. By all accounts, we think we're a successful society. We're not, if you look at the scale. Um, oops, sorry. Press this. Well, that's, the, that's a really steep line. You can see the countries at the top are like Denmark, the Netherlands, Switzerland, Holland, and then there's the United States and Italy. Oh, sorry. You can't hear me? Okay. So that's the relationship, and that's where the U.S. is. Now look at the x-axis. Belief in God correlated with successful society index. Strong negative relationship. Those societies that tend to be more religious are the ones that are dysfunctional. If you look at an objective criterion for dysfunctionality. Okay. Now why is this? Two explanations. Well, maybe the more you believe in God, the less likely you are to try to make your society a functional one. And you can make stories about Republicans opposing health care and abortions and things like that. But Paul has another explanation, which I tend to agree with, that those societies which, for whatever reasons, tend to take care of their citizens and be harmonious and tend to allow things like abortions and health care for everybody and lock up fewer of its citizens, in those societies you feel secure and well off and you don't need to turn to a sky father for your security and welfare. You don't need to pray for being, for being cured because you can go to government-run medical clinics. And so that's his explanation of this correlation. Okay, and this is the United States. So, my conclusion overall is, if this relationship is true and the explanation I just offered is true, then the real way to increase the teaching of evolution and the acceptance of evolution in our country is to not necessarily to get rid of religion, but to get rid of religion by building a more harmonious, just, and caring society. That's not only a nobler goal than making people accept Darwin. It's also a goal that all of us, whether we're scientists or not, can help achieve, and I assume that that's one of the reasons why we're here. Thank you. Jerry, thank you. What a, a magnificently clear, trenchant, and convincing exposition. Thank, thank you, you very much. Sure. Um, uh, we have time for a, we have time for a few questions. Sure. Go ahead. Um, it would be nice if you gave credit to Don Prothrow, who also wrote a book on evolution that I think is very good, and he's here. Yeah, I've tried to meet Don. Yeah, if any of you have not, if you want to really learn the fossil evidence, 
for evolution, Don Prothero. I've, I've highlighted him in my blog. I, what? 